Hello. I had somebody ask me about how to prepare drum and bass samples for LSDJ. Um, and I thought I would just go ahead and record a video about it. Um, I'm going to use Audacity because it's free. Um, and it's, it's good enough for this process. Um, feel free to use any kind of DAW if you're comfortable with it because a lot of DAWs um, have kind of like built-in beat slicers. I know like Ableton can do that. I, I do it in Renoise. Um, FL definitely has it, but we're going to show you how to do it in Audacity. So I've got two drum and bass samples. They're just drum loops that are each like two bars long or something like that. So I'll just drag this one into Audacity. Take a listen. So one thing you could do is you could do nothing. Um, and you could just bring this sample straight into LSDJ. Um, and when you go into the patcher, I'm going to just drag this into this empty kit. I've got LSDJ 92J pulled up, and this is the latest version of the patcher, 111.6. Um, so let's just drag this in here. Um, we've got a total of like 2.8 seconds, so this is 2.7 seconds, and we've got a little bit of free um, time left in this kit, just a tiny amount, so this sample does fit. It also, because there's so much dynamic range in this um, loop, we're kind of losing a lot of the snares, the ghost snares and the hi-hats um, due to this dither, which adds noise in order to kind of um, smooth out a little bit of the dynamic range. So you can take off the dither, which honestly, like that's a pretty cool sound. Um, but one thing to note is that when you do this, um, it keeps the noise all kind of in this mid range area. And instead of spreading it out uh, evenly across the whole frequency spectrum. So unless it's a very low frequency sound, like some kicks may benefit from not having dither, but I think in this case, probably it's going to sound better overall. And then what I would honestly do if I were going to do it this way is just um, add some distortion to the volume. So just clip the sample um, and let's see what it sounds like if we increase it by six. Like that's a little better and you could go even higher too. Kind of depending on how aggressive you want it. Um, one advantage of that is because, you know, um, we can fit the whole sample in here. You could, for instance, just use sample offset commands in LSDJ to get to different slices of this. But one, you know, that, that's not as easy to work with um, as if you had, say, 15 slices. Um, of course, you can only get 15, so we can't get all 16 slices. Um, but on the other hand, this loop is one bar that repeats twice. So there's really only eight unique sample slots. So um, I'm gonna come back to this, but let's take a look at how to slice this in Audacity. So um, I we're looking at a stereo sample and LSDJ only handles samples in mono. So these uh, channels are actually going to be summed. And one way to kind of deal with that in Audacity ahead of time, if you want, you don't have to, but if you wanna know how it sounds, you can bring down the gain by about six or seven and then go to split stereo to mono and it will just turn this into two mono tracks. And we're not clipping or distorting. Um, and now you can hear what it sounds like in mono. So the next thing I wanna do is actually do the slicing. So if we take this whole um, sample and highlight it, just select all, um, we can see that this sample is 2.824 seconds. And the next thing we want to do is go to our tools and choose regular interval labels. Now, some like older versions of Audacity don't have this by default, but I checked in like version three, I think comes with this by default. So this is what 
you want to use. And then we would choose the number of labels 16 because this is going to define our slices. And we're going to choose an even number. So what I did was I just opened a calculator and I went 2.824 seconds divided by 16 slices and it gave me this number 0.1765. So we'll get 16 slices evenly throughout the whole sample. Length of label region, none, because I want these to just be single labels. I don't want them to be a full region. Uh, I don't want to adjust this. I want to leave the label text blank and then just number them with one digit before the label. And I want to start my numbers from zero. So let's hit OK. So now we've got this label track that's got labels, uh, you know, evenly spaced throughout our whole drum loop. And this says, you know, 14, but we started at zero. So this is label 15. And we're just going to delete this last one because it's not ever going to be used. Like we can't, I just hit delete. No, I didn't want to delete that. Sorry. I'm not entirely sure how to delete this label. Select the audio. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> delete. There we go. So select your label and delete it. So now this gives us 15 labeled 1 through, or 0 through 14. Um, the next thing I would like to do, um, when we slice these, they're going to be named um, after these labels. So I usually like to just put in, uh, and in LSDJ, each one of our samples holds three characters. So I'd like to just put in having the first, you know, uh, number be the index of the sample and then just put in a two character <laughs> description, which isn't much, but, you know, KK for kick, or you could do BD for bass drum, something like that. And then, you know, this is like a closed hat. So, you know, I might do CH for closed hat or HH for hi hat. SN for snare, that sort of thing. Just so when I'm using my samples in the kit, um, it's just an easy visual indicator. Um, I mean, obviously you can hear them, but it's if you're looking at a pattern after you've already worked on a song and then put it away, it's just kind of nice to be able to s easily see what you've got going on. Um, and, you know, why not? So kick i think i'm pretty sure this is a closed hat it might be a ghost snare gs and um, let's see no i think it's 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 more like a shaker but i'll count it as like a hat and also the kick you know it kind of sustains here so you might even think about deleting this um i'll try it here so like i could delete this label i could have left the last one in so let's of course this will offset all of my other <laughs> labels. So um, I'm not sure if there's an actual better way to delete this label. We could try the edit menu. Labels. Edit labels, add label, paste text to new label. So maybe there isn't a way to do this. Um, in which case, or maybe we can slide all of these down. I'm not entirely sure. Do we, do we just slide the whole, can we slide the selection or maybe copy paste? What if we, oops. I don't honestly use Audacity for this. Um, more like, or you know, what, what might be easier to do is this actually. Cut these labels, jump ahead to about here and paste them, something like that. I'll show you why this isn't a big deal in a minute actually. So SN, now after we get to nine, I usually start like to naming, start the naming with just uh, A. A, B, C, D, E, and, and if there were more than, you know, 14 or 15 samples, I would have to go past F, but you never actually have to do that. So this is a kick again. This would be B, closed hat, C, snare, and then um, why don't we go ahead and do all of these, I guess. D, closed hat. I don't know. Let's just delete the last one. Um, oops. Delete. So, so now we've got these samples. Now, uh, we still have one more step. Let's go and just, and now you can see it when we zoom in, 
th not all of these are really exact on when these hits happen. So I just kind of want to go. And in fact, like even this one doesn't quite start. Oops. Got to select all of the, all of the audio in both of these tracks, I think, or just, yeah. Select both and we can slide these back. So now it's actually starting properly. And then we can go through and finish adjusting where we want these. That one seems okay. This one I just moved, so let's move it back. And you can check kind of by dragging the mouse just above. I wish it would keep this line here while you're actually moving the marker, but you can hover above it and so on. So this one, I guess the kick technically does start here. So that one's probably okay, but you know, you can kind of move these around as needed. Um, not every drum loop is going to be perfectly <laughs> sample accurate, you know, so it's, it's worth kind of just making these adjustments. Like I said, in most DAWs, like this is kind of the, the workflow in a, a free tool. Um, a lot of DAWs have like transient detection and stuff so they can kind of do this slicing part automatically. Um, another option would be simply highlighting the audio that you want like this and just export audio, uh, selected audio. And then you could export this as a kick and just select certain hits from this. Um, so I'm kind of just showing you this workflow as like a really automatic way to do some quick slicing. Um, but you know, you, th there are other possibilities here too. So let's move this one back a little bit, just kind of manually adjusting these because once they're out of here, we can't tweak them. Um, we can tweak them a little bit, but it's, it's pretty good just to do this. So, all right, that's, that's good enough probably. And then now we'll go to export multiple. And what this will do is we'll split the file based on labels. Um, we don't want to include any audio before the first label, but also our label started at the beginning. And then I want to name them using the label name. So now I can hit export and it's exported 14 sample files. Cool. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go into, let's clear this kit actually. And I'll go and start dragging in my samples. You can just drag all of these in at once, although it gets a little bit loud. So let's just do that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, one thing you'll notice um, almost immediately is each one of these samples gets normalized. So we've got some of these samples that uh, are quieter, you know, but when we bring them into LSDJ, they're essentially going to be amplified. So if we did like this, you know, it's going to sound like this. Uh, like it's going to have a really loud hi hat in comparison to the click and that sort of thing. But you can play around with the volumes here too. Like this kick, you know, maybe I want to remove the dither. I actually think it sounds better with dither, but maybe I want to kind of distort the kick a little, you know, that has way more punch and like impact. So you can get as aggressive as you want or fine tune it according to your taste. This sample, actually, I don't really necessarily think it sounds that good. I think it would have probably been a better idea to have this whole sample be the kick, basically what we did down here. So, um, because you've just got, the, this sounds okay on its own, but this is kind of useless. Um, but, you know, it is evenly sliced. So you could, um, it, it would be easy to chop these different sections around and you could also kind of bring bring this volume down a little bit and, and so on. Um, you can also trim the ends off. And, and if you haven't seen this, um, I'll link to the other video I did on the LSD patcher. So again, I think probably it sounds good with a little bit of clipping. And see, we've got this kind of trail at the end of this. I'm just 
gonna trim that off because I don't want that extra click at the end like where it kind of starts to distort. So I'm gonna trim that a little. Might choose to kind of increase the volume a little bit. Here's another snare. I think it sounds a lot better. And you know, depending on what you uh, what you want, it might be a good option to kind of like take some of the, you know, I'm trying to get the audio or the just the section of this highlighted. <laughs> I thought there was a way to select from one kind of to the other, maybe, maybe like this. No. Yeah. Um, but you know, one thing you could do would be on some of these samples to kind of do an EQ, not a graphic EQ. Oops. I want the filter curve and kind of do this like high pass filter. This is yeah, about up to a hundred and just kind of see like that removes some of that low kick stuff. So you get that snare without this whole low frequency from the kick. So those would be some things that you could do to kind of improve the the sound of just that. And like I said, if you just wanted to export just this as its own kind of snare sample, that would be easy to do with just export selected audio. So it might be an option if you wanted to fill up this last slot with an extra snare that didn't have this bass. Gonna lower the volume of this one. And same with this one. And also, I think trim, trim the ends. Again, lots of low frequency stuff. So the, the hi-hats would probably sound better if they were a little bit filtered, but also it's gonna change the quality of the loop, right? So. Now that's a nice kick and it's pretty long. So I, I like the sound of that a lot better than having these, you know, separate. So let's call this DNB1, rename this kit. Let's go to the next kit and uh, we'll get rid of this one. We'll keep the label track, I think, because uh, this next sample is also two bars. So basically the, the work of the label is kind of already done. We don't have to worry about it now. Um, let's just go ahead and start tweaking. Oh, let's listen to the sample too. And um, so yeah, so we can do the same thing here. Take the gain down about seven, split stereo to mono. And then just go ahead and get into these, you know, adjusting these labels to where they need to be, which, um, they don't have to be like exact, exact, but I, I do think it helps to have it to, to do this process and just adjust them. Kind of just keep the same format. Again, like I said, you know, you could just load the whole loop into LSDJ and there's nothing wrong with that, but I think this just gives you finer control. Um, and if you already have individual drum hits, I feel like that's, I just prefer, um, kind of sampling that way. And uh, once these are finished, I'll load them up in an emulator and kind of show you um, what that looks like to use them in a phrase and stuff like that. Although I'm sure if you've used the stock drum kits in LSDJ, it's it's not that much different. Um, so these are looking pretty good. I'm just about done here. Um, one thing would be probably to make sure that when you export multiple, you don't overwrite the existing files in here because they're just going to name after um, what, you know, they were labeled. So you may want to put these in separate folders. So um, I'll just make a separate folder. These, I should have exported these to DNB1, but I'll make a separate folder called DNB2. I'll, I'll rename these afterwards. So just DNB2, export using label track name. Whoops. I 
think I need to maybe have this below the my samples try that again oh I was exporting based on tracks not labels okay that's why all right so we've got the same thing so let's again load up the original loop Again, like lots of dynamic range, so we lose the, the hi-hats. Let's boost it by six. I mean, I think the kick sounds great. And like I said, you, you definitely could do that. Um, I think maybe we'll just kind of keep this here. DNB to loop. Kind of keep this here as an example in the emulator. And then we'll load in our files from this actual kit. Sorry, uh, an advanced volume warning for this part. Okay. And then let's call this DNB2. And then, you know, this is kind of the same process that we just did. Um. So you can kind of decide like do, how much tail do you want on the kick? Do you want dither or not? Do you do you want it really distorted? You can have individual volume control, etc. I think this sounds good, so you know. I might just bring up the volume on this. Um Of course, I just realized I didn't rename these. And so, but uh we can rename these in LSDJ, in case you forget to do this part. So 3CH, just right click and you can rename. Right, so this would be five kick. Either way, you have to rename them. So it's not, you know, really, whether you want to do that in Audacity or in the, in the patcher. This is a snare. Okay. Kind of want to trim off some of that really long. See, this this was the sample that lasts twice as long, so And you can see sometimes actually it, um, the auto uh, trim will kind of take out the extra noise, but when, once you start increasing the volume, it'll increase the sample. So you may want to kind of put that trim back on uh, because less of it's being detected as silence, essentially. Um, this. This is closed hat, so A, closed hat. This is a kick, C, kick. And then D, this would be snare. All right, and I definitely, oh. I can hear a little bit of a hat in there. Still think I'm gonna trim some off the end. That's probably good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and I'll, I'm gonna load it up in an emulator um, and I'll be right back with that. All right, so here we are with LSDJ92J loaded up that we've just got our custom samples in. Let's go ahead and load up one or two sample instruments or kit instruments. So let's go ahead and select DNB1, which is here. So now we can just go ahead and
And remember, this one is twice as long, so we'll skip one here. I think we may be at a slightly a too fast of a tempo to make this sound proper, so. Yeah, that's that's extremely fast. But uh, just for the purposes of this demonstration, um, that that's about right. So realistically, I would probably double this tempo and just space these out, you know, uh, over two because this is a two bar sample. So um, we could we could you know we could illustrate the same thing by essentially just pasting these and. This is, I, I may not just copy and paste these because it's easier to just do this. And now another uh, advantage of this, uh, kind of skipping ahead here, but one advantage of having these slices like this is now you can change the tempo. Obviously, it's not perfect because some of these hi-hat 16th note hits are, you know, a little weird. Um, so, so this is, you know, this is typically the way I like to work. And then, you know, when you want to start switching things up, you know, it's, it's easy to just kind of do this like... Stuff like that it's super easy you don't have to worry about but let's let's show an example of what it would look like to use just one instrument um, with one loop in it so this is our DNB 2 loop right so let's say I wanted to kind of do the same thing um, one option would be to use this synth kit offset so this you know, if we wanted to think about equal uh, equal steps through our samples, um, it would be about every eight, I guess. So this would would be equally stepping through, or or I guess not. I guess, um, and, and it works differently depending on whether you retrig the instrument or not. So it it may require t something like this. Um, Nope, I'm thinking of something else. All right, let's see. Two, three, oops. Uh, yeah, so, or actually, I think we can just do this kind of offset thing. Nope, uh, well, let's see, what, all right. <laughs> well, either way, this is still a cool effect. Okay, so I guess it's not as easy as I thought. I figured I could just go through and do slices, um, like that it would slice evenly through the whole sample, and I don't know that that's the case. I think you can only search through fa so far through the sample. So this is already be being a much bigger drawback in my opinion. Because what if you want to start halfway through the sample? Um, it's not really possible to do here. I think you can do it here, but you don't have the option to like do it in the phrase. So all right, let's take a look at our, our next chopped drum and bass loop. Oh, this is gonna be, it's, it's gonna be the same situation here, so. And then, you know. So, and, and obviously you can double these up if you want to make them twice as loud, right? So. And then you've got all kinds of different options in terms of like um, all kinds of other stuff. Like if you want these to be offset a little bit or if you want 
one of these to hit a little bit shorter. You could turn the loop on. So that's pretty wicked. Okay. <laughs> I think that's probably about it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, thanks for watching. Um, check the links below for some more stuff and I'll see you soon.